Welcome back to Paul's Tech News. It is December. How did this happen? The year is pretty much over, so let's wrap this one up, everybody. Stick a fork in 2022. We're done. Let's call in sick and cozy up next to the fireplace with an audiobook and a hot cup of cocoa for the rest of the year is what I will no doubt be saying roughly two weeks from now. Much as I'd like to take my foot off the gas, there are still GPUs to be launched, charity events to be live streamed, giveaway PCs to build, and news to be teched. So lube up that snowblower because winter is coming all over this week's episode of Tech News. Excellent! Today's video is brought to you by the new Height Eclipse HG10 wireless gaming headset, combining a clean matte lunar gray color scheme with competition grade functionality, including 2.4 gigahertz wireless connectivity with 30 hour estimated battery life, high fidelity 40 millimeter neodymium drivers, a detachable unidirectional mic, USB type C connectivity with an included 1.8 meter cable to play and charge at the same time, and conveniently accessible controls for power, volume, and mute. For more on the Height Eclipse HG10 headset, click the sponsor link in the video description. We begin our coverage with an important reminder about what could very well be the most important event this December, the Extra Life charity livestream that Kyle and I will be hosting in less than a week on Saturday, December 10th to raise money for Children's Miracle Network Hospitals. We'll be kicking off at about 10 a.m. Pacific time and streaming for eight hours or so. So if you're in favor of disadvantaged children getting treatment for serious medical conditions, you should definitely join us. If you're against that, you can still join us, but I don't recommend vocalizing your stance in chat. There will be PC giveaways, gaming with friends, and tasteful degeneracy, so I hope to see you all there. I'll be streaming here on my YouTube channel and on Twitch. In other news, now that the bulk of the hardware launches for late 2022 are finished, we are seeing an uptick in rumors about 2023. One of the most anticipated launches is AMD's Ryzen 7000 series CPUs with 3D vCache, which could help Team Red take back the best CPU for gaming crown from Intel's 13900K. Credulous but unconfirmed reports have indicated that these chips might be announced as early as CES 2023, aka the first week in January. It was also rumored that there might initially be only six and eight core models of these new parts, but the Korean tech media outlet Quasar Zone claims to have uncovered more details. As described by Twitter leaker Harukaze5719 and formally written up by WCCF Tech, we might actually be getting three Ryzen 7000 X3D models, a 16 core, a 12 core, and an 8 core. Clock speeds might not need to be reduced as they were with the 5800X3D, and they might even launch by January 23rd, which would sync up well with a CES 2023 announcement. Based on this small amount of information, Quasar Zone extrapolated some performance numbers based on the 5800X3D uplift from the 3D vCache and made these charts, testing an RTX 4090. Again, this information is extrapolated and not from actual testing, so take it with a grain of salt, but as expected, the X3D versions of the chips could very well outpace Intel's 13th gen Raptor Lake flagship. Hassan from WCCF Tech also added that he expects a 170 watt TDP for the new CPUs, which would mostly be a big uplift for the 8 core variant since the 7700X's TDP currently is 105 watts. This could all be less than two months away though. And here I was thinking that we'd have some downtime after CES, but apparently there will be more benchmarks to run. Count me in. No, God, please, no, no! It might have slipped past you, but NVIDIA quietly launched one more GPU this season. It is the RTX 3080 8GB, and many expected it to be in the same ballpark of performance as the RTX 3060 12GB, but our friend Steve over at Hardware Unboxed revealed on Thursday that that is definitely not true. The 3060 8GB trims the memory interface and bandwidth by a third, dropping from 192-bit down to 128-bit, resulting in 17% slower performance versus the 12GB model on average, and sometimes lagging by as much as 30%. Surely NVIDIA is offering this card at a reduced price then, right? <laughs> of course they aren't. They still slapped a $330 MSRP on it, the same as the 12 gig, and retail prices are all muddled between the two variants, with most selling for $350 to $400 regardless of the memory allocation. And you'd probably be correct in assuming that this was all intentional. The quiet launch, the nearly identical specs except for the memory, and even the difficulty discerning between retail boxes from one card to the next will undoubtedly lead to customers buying the wrong GPU, or at least thinking they're getting the original 3060 when they're actually getting this cut down version. 
But I guess you've got to give NVIDIA credit. They've been accused for several months of only bringing overpriced, misleadingly named GPUs to the high-end market. Now they're offering those features to budget buyers too. Speaking of misnamed GPUs, the $900 RTX 4080 12 gig, now canceled and erased from history, was technically only canceled in name, and the GPUs themselves lived on. And while board partners have undoubtedly been laboring to rebuild cooling shrouds with new labels, flash GPU vBioses, and print new retail boxes for the cards formerly known as RTX 4080 12 gig, we consumers have been waiting to see how they're going to be inevitably rebadged, and especially if the price will change. Videocards.com believes they'll be sold as RTX 4070 Ti's that could launch on January 5th, and a picture posted to Twitter by Megasize GPU has apparently given us a first look at the AD104 GPU under the hood. It's expected to pack 7,680 CUDA cores, 240 tensor cores, and 60 cores for ray tracing, which sounds good until you compare it to the RTX 4090's AD102 die, which is more than twice the size, 608 square millimeters versus 295 for the AD104. This means better yields for NVIDIA with the AD104, which would seem like a good thing if we had even the slightest inkling of hope that their savings would be passed along to the consumer. We know they won't because as Jensen said, Moore's Law is dead. Or perhaps more accurately, Moore's Law is dead to the consumer, and the benefits of Moore's Law will now be wholly contributed to NVIDIA's bottom line rather than any improved performance per dollar value trickling down to us plebs. Seriously though, what the hell is going on with the GPU market? But speaking of buying stuff, I spent a lot of time in the past couple weeks looking at PC parts and their prices, and I am left somewhat confused by goings-ons in the GPU market. Marketplace. On the one hand, PC gamers seem to have thoroughly rejected the $1,200 RTX 4080. It can still be found in stock at MSRP, and some scalpers are even facing their own equivalent of the walk of shame, attempting to return their cards for a refund or to simply sell them at the same price they bought them for, which is a bad way to go about scalping stuff. Replacement-only return policies from retailers like Newegg make that tough to do as well. We also heard follow-ups to last week's news about GPU shipments being down, and now the Q3 report is in. 10% fewer GPUs sold versus Q2, and 25% down year over year, which puts us in the same range as 2009 when there was a big recession, if you remember. To me, this all should have caused there to be some pretty screaming good deals on graphics cards for the holiday cycle. And yet, for NVIDIA graphics cards in particular, the sales just never came. In fact, prices have been going up with even the second-hand market jumping by up to 200% just in the past few weeks alone. This is somewhat baffling for anyone with a vague grasp of supply versus demand economics, especially given that one of the big influences on GPU demand, cryptocurrency mining for profit, isn't really a thing anymore. Even Bitcoin's hash rate is falling steeply in recent weeks, and you can't even effectively mine Bitcoin with GPUs, but this is because the crypto market has dropped so much overall, and recession concerns are on everyone's mind. But who then is buying up all the GPUs? Are there really scalpers or investors who have started buying up cheap secondhand GPUs in bulk from miners and are reselling them at higher prices, as Usman from WCCF Tech suspects? Are there warehouses full of GPUs sitting idle right now, waiting for prices to increase again? Can we plan a heist? Or perhaps, rather than resorting to petty thievery, we're not NVIDIA after all, we should simply put our money where our mouths are. And I don't mean a variety of unmentionable parts of your mom, I mean we should buy GPUs that are being sold at retail for good prices. And yes, that might mean you don't have an NVIDIA option to choose from, because one thing has been glaringly apparent to me in the past week. AMD graphics cards are a better value versus NVIDIA at every price point. Oh look, that's the same thing that this Tom's Hardware article headline says. But seriously though, the best deal on an NVIDIA GPU this past week was on an RTX 2060. An RTX 2060 that launched nearly four years ago in January 2019 that they still want 180 bucks for. Meanwhile, AMD had multiple very solid Radeon options that totally outperformed the 2060 in the $200 to $300 price range, and every single RX 6000 series GPU, including the top-end RX 6950 XT, could be found for less than 800 bucks, a price you'd still be lucky to find an RTX 3084 more than two years after that card launched. It's not a very good situation for anyone trying to buy an NVIDIA graphics card. But okay, it's time to 
clear the air with the fast-moving wind emanating from these tech briefs. One of the more positive stories from this past week was AMD dropping the price on their Ryzen 7000 series processors, and while I gave them a hard time for these deals, seeming permanent at first but then switching to temporary, the markdowns do still seem to be in effect, which is good news for now. There also seems to be some refreshed box art, where they have added an outer glow effect in orange to some of the lines on the front of the box. The old boxes look so dull and drab now. How shameful. Another rumor popped up Wednesday about Radeon RX 7000 series GPUs, and not the ones that launch next week. Maybe even better ones based on a revised Navi 33 chip. Paul from Red Gaming Tech, who has probably the best name ever, claims that Navi 31 might be retaped, gently massaged, and given a pep talk to allow it to hit clock speeds above 3 GHz. RDNA 3 based GPUs were rumored to be able to hit 3000 MHz early in the development cycle, but that doesn't seem to have materialized with the RX 7900 XT and XTX. Paul says that a leaker told him that an RX 7950 XT, RX 7950 XTX, and RX 7990 XTX are in the works. And they might even sport 3D vCache for even more gaming performance. If true, these new GPUs could debut in mid to late 2023. The 12VH power connector controversy is still simmering away, emitting fumes and the smell of melted plastic, and now the lawyers have gotten involved via a class action lawsuit. This prompted PCI SIG, the governing body for the connector spec, to totally push the blame onto manufacturing partners like NVIDIA for the failures in the solution that they co-developed originally with Intel. Members that manufacture, market, or sell PCI SIG technologies, including 12VH power connections, need to take all appropriate and prudent measures to ensure end-user safety, including tested for the reported problem cases from that lawsuit, PCI SIG said to their members before also forwarding this slap on the wrist email to the press, which they usually don't do, clearly indicating that they want nothing to do with taking responsibility for the connector's failures. How noble of them. TSMC, meanwhile, is already well underway with construction of a new fab in Arizona, which is slated to spin up in 2024. At Apple's urging, as well as Nvidia and AMD, they are upgrading it already though. Originally, they were going to build out 5 nanometer manufacturing there, but now they'll be working on 4 nanometer chips, which are that much closer to the bleeding edge. There certainly appeared to be unspoken geopolitical concerns motivating the change, but they're unlikely to give a straight answer on that. Simply put, diversifying the number of fabs and locations where those fabs reside will make for a more resilient TSMC in the future. Expect a formal announcement on this Tuesday, when US President Joe Biden will visit the site for a ceremony. Finally, for anyone who has been watching this video and thinking that I'm making way too big of a deal over increased GPU prices, I have a card for you. NVIDIA's ADA-based RTX 6000 48GB professional graphics card, which costs $10,000, at least according to listings at CompSource and ShopBLT. It's totally worth it because you get the full ADA chip, 18,176 CUDA cores, that's 1,792 more than the stupid RTX 4090, as well as 568 tensor cores for AI and 142 Gen 3 ray tracing cores. It's even on sale right now for like, $8,000 or something, which I know you don't care about because sales are for poor people, but maybe you can buy two or three of these to truly distance yourself from the hoi polloi and their awful mainstream cards that don't cost as much as a brand new sedan. You have my permission. You're worth it. And I hope this video was worth your time. There you have it guys, tech news for the week, and if you liked it, click that like button or leave me a comment down below. While you're down there, all the articles I talked about today are linked in the video's description if you're interested. And you can also check out my store at paulshardware.net where the holiday sale is still going on. High quality merchandise such as t-shirts, hoodies, beer sets, and more on sale. Subscribing to my channel is always a good call too. Don't forget to tune in for the charity stream next Saturday. Thanks again everyone, and we'll see you next week.